recording. Yeah, recording has started. Ron has no voice. Um, we're using some sentence correction problems today, and the point is to focus on intended meaning of sentences. And now there's this kind of strange graphic that's on the front page here. Um, at least one person here knows what the deal is with this graphic. Maybe or you don't. Well, anyway, you're going to find out. Um, this graphic here that's on the front is a picture of a sign from a parking garage in downtown LA. Why would I do that? Why would I put this on the study hall? Well, here's why. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another part of this sign for approximately five or ten seconds right here. That yellow part. Okay. I want you to take about ten seconds and read this. Okay. You read it. Done. You read it. Someone tell me in the chat box what that said. Like, what was the message of that yellow part? Like, what was it supposed to say? Or what was it telling you? If you're going to park your car in this garage, what would be the message that you would get from that sign? Okay, so, yeah, right? I mean, basically everybody is getting the message of the sign. And in fact, a lot of people might not even understand why I chose that particular sign in the first place. Because here, here, here's, a, here's, a here's a bunch of captures from the chat box. Like, you're basically getting the idea, right? The idea is that, I mean, it should be kind of obvious. The idea is that if you leave your car there after closing time, then you won't be able to pick it up until the garage opens the next day, right? So this is the intended meeting. That's what the sign is there to tell you. Sign, the message of the sign is... If you leave your car uh, past closing time, you'll have to pick it up when the garage opens the next day, or sometime after that, at least. Okay, now, a few of you seem to have actually noticed this, but I bet that most people didn't notice this. That's not actually what the sign says. No, nah, the sign doesn't actually say that. In fact, if you look at what the sign actually says, the sign actually says exactly the opposite of that. But if you read this very, very literally, what it actually says is that they will only give you your car back while the garage is still closed. Like, if this sign was literally true, that if you waited until the garage opened the next day, you would be too late. Like, you would basically be screwed. How about that? So, there's a couple of things I want you to notice here. There's at least three. First thing, three things to notice. To notice here. First thing to notice is that the sign says the exact opposite of what it actually means. Typo, fix it. Okay, right. Now, the second thing is that even though it says the exact opposite of what it means, this poses no difficulty, this poses no barrier at all to understanding because it's easy to use common sense to determine the intended meaning. 
Now, this intended meaning is not necessarily what does the sign literally say. It's just intended meaning by common sense. And because you have this normal focus, right, because you're reading the sign like a normal person, You, you may not even have noticed, you, you, you might not even notice that it said something else. Like, I bet most people in here didn't even realize that the sign didn't actually say what it meant. <coughs> the point of this is, you can probably tell where this is supposed to be going, given that this is eventually a GMAT workshop, which is this, this, is how you should initially read the sentence correction sentences. In other words, you should initially read them exactly like you would read anything else in the world, whether that be a book, a magazine, or a sign on a garage. It doesn't make any difference how you would do it. You just read it the way you read normal things. That's how it works. So the deal is, and the other thing about this is, this is also proof, by the way, that intended meaning is not a function of looking at an answer that's correct. Because, you know, step one of the sentence correction is always look for intended meaning. Step one of any sentence correction problem is get the intended meaning. And some people say when they, when they see this listed as the first step, they say, wait a minute, but if I'm looking at the incorrect version of the sentence, how am I supposed to do that? And that's why I really, really like this example, because not only is this sentence incorrect, but it's, it's more than just incorrect. It actually says literally exactly the opposite of what it's supposed to say. And even though it does, there's still no problem at all. There's still no issue with understanding it. So, lesson number one here. You should always know what the intended meaning is, and as the sign proves, even if you are looking at an incorrect version of something, you should still know exactly what it is intended to say. Absolutely, yes. The only, diff the only exception to this would come if you had some sentence that was genuinely ambiguous. But the GMAT doesn't really test that more than vanishingly few times. So, I mean, this is not a sentence with two reasonable meanings. So there's no ambiguity here. Well, don't forget, um, don't forget that if you come up with two meanings and one of them is reasonable and one of them is crazy, then that is not ambiguous. It's, it's the reasonable one. Don't forget that. So step one. Of one of the correction problem is get the intended meaning. Yes, yes it is. Okay, so let's do some problems. Um, as always, before we do some problems, we got to show you this attribution here. So all the practice problems that you are about to see are from the free GMAT prep software that is copyright GMAC. So, all right. Let's talk about a problem. How about this one? Remember where you find answers to multiple choice questions. Answers to multiple choice questions are found here. Please do not answer in the chat box. Give us a shot. I take like 20 or 30 more seconds on this. I gotta, I gotta adjust some technical stuff here. Okay, let's talk about this problem. Okay, so one thing that should be clear, at least, okay, remember the focus of today is using intended meaning to answer these questions. I mean, what, all the, the major things that can go wrong with sentences are still in play, of course. And one, it seems most people were able to make the following distinction pretty quickly, which is that the amounts, the amounts exceed some number, not not exceed 
So we're down to, just by considering basic mechanics, we can get down to D and E. But now let's, let's talk about that. So you know, there were uh, one or two people who picked one of the choices with exceeds. So if you have any questions about that, you can put them in the chat. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this distinction here. So, that's something I've seen in a couple of problems. It's not super amazingly common, but I've seen it more than, more than once or twice. What's the deal with able to, let me know if the story is there. What is that? What what is that all about? So remember when you this is not a this is not a mechanical type of thing. So when you when you're using terms like passive voice. Not really the point, especially not today. Like the issues that we're going to look at today are going to be very meaning centric. So we're going to talk about what stuff means. I mean, which should always be your focus anyway. But um, this 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 kind of phrase right here, able to I'll give you a couple more. Let me just make up. It's it's not a tense thing either. Although tense would be a meaning issue. But no, there's no, there are no tenses because there, there aren't even any tenses here because there are no verbs there. The only verb in this part is exceed because able is a modifier and to be consumed. Remember that to verb is not a verb. But there's a couple of sentences. How about this? How about these two sentences? What do you guys think of that? Do we have any opinion on that pair of sentences? You know what the story is there? Tell you what, let's 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 use the polling tools for this. I'm gonna change your to change your tools to green check red X. So you'll see where you normally see the multiple choice answers underneath your name. You'll see a uh, check mark type of symbol over the moment. So for each one of these, let's vote on it. Give me a, give me a green check red X for this one. If you think this is okay or not okay, this one. Okay, so everybody thinks the first sentence is all right, and absolutely it is. So this sentence is okay. What about the other one? Green, green check, red X for this one. So far exceed and exceed by far, those are both things that are okay. In, in written English. Those are, those are both things. You can exceed something by far or you can far exceed something. Green check red X for this. Aha, Derek. Okay, so here's the votes right now that you guys have made. So most people recognize that something is wrong with that second sentence. It is wrong. Um, perhaps you only recognize that when it is paired with the other version, which is fine, by the way, because notice when you get wrong versions like this, they're going to be paired with something that is correct. But this doesn't make sense. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is nothing to do with mechanics or anything like that. It's, it's, it's what Eric says. The issue is 
if you think about what we are actually saying here, in this particular instance, this is not an issue of whether the sound can or cannot do something. This is an issue of whether people can or cannot do something. Like when you see the same thing with the word capability too. Like like when you see able or ability or capable or capability, what you need to think about is who or what is actually able or unable to do something. Because, okay, the other thing you can't do is you can't memorize rules like it has to be people or animals all the time because it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. You, you actually can have things that are able to do things. And you can have sounds that are able to do things if it is the sound that is actually the thing that's doing something. But the issue here is the question that you are answering here, the question that you're thinking about here is, can people do this? Like what we're talking about here is people cannot hear this sound. As opposed to if you are talking about something that is a genuine ability of sound itself, then you could totally have a sentence that does that. Like if you have a sentence that says this, if I say sound waves are able to shatter glass, this is an absolutely correct sentence. Because now this is not something that a person can or cannot do. This is literally an ability that, that the sound waves possess. The sound waves can actually do that. It is something that the sound waves themselves are directly doing. So it's, it's an issue of meaning. It's when you read the sentence, it's like what, what actually can or cannot. Who has the ability or the capability or who lacks the ability or the capability. So that's what we're doing here. Um, so Derek, if you were meeting this in this particular context, then absolutely yes. But be careful to try to generalize because, as illustrated by that sentence below, it's not really possible to make generalizations like that here. So yes, in this context, but beware of generalizations. So there you go. Okay. Um, so going back to this, I mean, clearly this has nothing to do with, with even if you don't know what carcinogens means, you can figure out in this context that it is some kind of chemical that is bad. And it means things that cause cancer, but there's enough context here for you to figure out that it means bad stuff in the food. So. It, it, this is not what can or cannot those things do. This is what this is what people like. What are people able to consume? Not not what is the food able to do. So the issue here is what what are people able or unable to do? It, it's not. It's not. What can the carcinogens do? And it's not what can or can't the carcinogens themselves do. It's what, what can people do. So, therefore, this doesn't make sense. And we have E. Now, notice um, the question, let's see. I already addressed that earlier, but I'll say again, exceed by far and far exceed are both things. They are both okay. Um, and I addressed that earlier too. Um, those are both okay. They are both things. Um, there's not really a difference per se. I mean, there are small, small, subtle differences, but not anything that just when nothing on the level of this exam. So those are both legitimate things. So. E here. There you go. Um, notice that can and could do not have this distinction. So that's one more thing to know about this because we can put another color here. Can and could do not have this distinction. 
for instance, you can actually say can or could in both directions. So you can say people are unable to hear this sound. You can also say people cannot hear this sound. Also okay. And then this sound is unable to be heard by humans doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, you can also write this sound cannot be heard by humans. This makes sense. So there you go. So this is it. you can't apply the same concept to you cannot apply the same concept to can, cannot, could, could not that you that you can with ability or capability and so on. I mean, there are some other differences. Like when you say unable to, you mean in general, it's, this is an ability that people do not have, as opposed to cannot might just mean in this one particular context. Like if I say, if I say I cannot hear your voice to someone, then that probably just means right now, at this exact moment of time, time there's too much noise. But if I say I am unable to hear your voice, that's like if I'm talking to someone on Skype, you know, I'm unable to hear your voice on Skype. I mean, I can never, I just can't hear you at all. So, in general, we'll see that. No, that's not the kind of thing that's test. But that's not, you know. all right, anything else about this problem? Um, those. So, those would be, in terms of context, you know what that means, right? Because Amounts exceeding something else. So this would be the amount of suspected carcinogen would be those. Those would be the amounts of those would be the amount of these things. Because those amounts exceed the amounts that humans can consume. Which is plural, and so those is used for it quite correctly. All right, let's do another one. Let's see. And so yeah, let's pick let's pick another one. I got one more in here that uses the same sort of thing, enable ability, so forth. So let's do that one. Go for it. Same theory with multiple choice answers. All right, let's try to pick the answer to this pretty soon. Especially in light of the fact that we have already discussed the whole able thing. So that should help you answer this more quickly than otherwise. <coughs> Let's go ahead and take an answer, please. <coughs> okay, we've got Sram. Nick and Nick Alex. Okay, let's discuss. So this whole notion of able and unable and all this other bit. So we we can use that because um, enable is used in the same sort of way. So um, if you if you enable someone or something to do something else, and it doesn't have to be a person or animal. If you like, you can enable sound to your shattered glass by giving it a high enough pitch or frequency or whatever it is that does that. But enable has the same sort of thing, same meaning implications as able. So in other words, if you say like something enables people to hear certain sounds, it doesn't make sense. On the other hand, if you say something enables certain sounds to be heard by people, then it doesn't really make sense. 
because that's not an ability possessed by the sounds. That's an ability of people. So, if you take a look at this, if you enable, you, you don't, I mean, think about whose ability, right? This is a sentence that talks about an ability that scientists now have. That's the point. The point of the sentence, regardless of how it is originally written, the point of the sentence is that scientists now have the ability to unravel certain secrets of science. I mean, the secrets of, what is it, embryo development or whatever, I mean, those are not able or unable to do anything here. So, enable the secrets to do something that, that, doesn't, that doesn't work because it just doesn't make sense. Okay. Now, the other type of thing is this modifier here. So, what is the deal? with this kind of modifier. By studying or by the study of those kinds of things. Here's a sentence. And here's another sentence that's a lot like that one. Okay. Let's do green check, red X for these things again. Give me the green check or the red X for this one. Remember where those are located, those polling tools that you have. Green check, red X tool. That's here. Give me the green check, red X for that. Again, as most of you have correctly identified, not everyone, but most of you, this doesn't work. Okay, what about this one? Check red X. Really? Interesting. Most of you are saying this works. This one also does not work. This is also incorrect. Um, most people voted it correct. I'm, I'm going to suspect that most people voted it correct just because the other one is incorrect. But that's not, it's not really how it works. I mean, here's a version that actually does work. A version that actually does work is this. That's the version that actually works. Notice, because the first two, they're, they're different, they're structured very differently, the first two are from this last one. So, the reason why the first two don't work is because you start with this modifier. And when you have modifier like this at the beginning of the sentence, if you have this type of modifier that doesn't specify who or what was coming up from school, then it defaults to the subject that comes right after it. So that, that's how these modifiers in general are used. This modifier, and it, so you say who was coming home from school, or who or was. Same sort of thing, this is still a modifier. I mean, adding while doesn't do anything to make it not a modifier and it doesn't specify a subject. So this is still a modifier. Still has the same issue, who or what was coming from. This, though, this is not a modifier anymore. I mean, this sentence now, this is a complete sentence. And so is this. So this is a complete sentence. Is another complete sentence. Not a modifier, so you don't have the same kind of dependence. So the reason why the first two don't make any sense is they are telling you that the wind had to come home from school. So the thing that joins these, these sentences is the word as. 
So the ad is playing the connecting well there. Um, it's not just a sentence, comma, another sentence. Um, if you, Gene, if you did write the sentence that way coming up from school, I was going off my bike, I would work. <coughs> and if you kept the purple part the same, that's how you would have to write it. If you kept if you kept this here, this would have to say I was going off my bike, by the way. Yeah. So by studying this thing or by the study, let's make that a different color. Let's make that the same color as the as we have below there. I mean, the people doing the studying here are pretty obviously the scientists. So yeah, the sentence starts with by studying something or by the study of something, then that's going to have to talk about the scientists. So blah, 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 blah. It was possible. No, don't start with the scientists. By studying stuff, this is saying a fruit fly is studying an awfully smart fruit fly, but that's not what the sentence is supposed to be saying. Which would be kind of cool if you had a fruit fly that actually studied, or maybe they're just really scary. But no matter what, it is not what the sentence is supposed to say. And then by studying the the fly, same thing. The secrets, the secrets are not studying either. So, nope, flies are not studying. Secrets don't study. E doesn't sound that kind of modifier. E just says this, this the study of this fly has enabled scientists to begin to unravel stuff. So, there you go. Notice both of these things, the enable issue is entirely meaning based. And once you realize that this is a modifier, this is also an entirely meaning based decision because there's nothing mechanically bad about coming home from school, the wind moving off my bike. I mean, from a pure mechanics grammar standpoint, this is a perfectly valid sentence. But it's just ridiculous because the wind doesn't have to come home when the wind doesn't go to school. Maybe in one of those desert creation myths, that might be possible. You know, like the way we go to school with the clouds and the rain on the back of a giant turtle in the desert, but not here. So, okay. Um, let's do another one. How about, say, how about that one? That one right there. You know where the multiple choice answers are found. Those found right here. Perfect. All right, let's talk about it. So, this one, unless you did very well on this problem, so we can probably roll through it pretty quickly and move on to another one. So, what's the intended meaning of the sentence? I mean, what? Remember, it's like that sign. This is not what does it literally say in terms of mechanics. This is like, who, who, who should write the textbook for? I mean, what are those things supposed to say? For whom does she write the textbook? Chat box. She wrote the textbook for Spanish speakers. And specifically, why? Why did she? What is their whole situation with, with buying on translations or whatever? Wrote the textbook for Spanish speakers so that, well, what, what's the situation right now? The situation right now is that they, like, before this textbook hits the market, what is the situation in which they find themselves? Yeah, the situation they find themselves in right now is that they have to rely on translations from English 
because this is not a thing that exists yet, right? So she wrote a textbook for Spanish speakers who currently do have to rely on translations from English so that they don't, so that they don't have to go anymore, so that she can, like, release them from that reliance. You know, so that, that's the intention, right? So that they can be released from that reliance so that they can just read their own book and not have to read transmissions. So this is the point, right? Like, a number of people pick choice C, and there is nothing mechanically wrong with choice C. But see, the problem with choice C is that you have people speaking Spanish who do not have to rely on translations. This is this is exactly the opposite of what we would, what would need to say. Like if we're going to say she wrote the book for people speaking Spanish who knew something, we would have to say she wrote the, I mean, we, we could also write the sentence. We, we did chose not to write the sentence this way, but we, we certainly could also write the sentence as she wrote the textbook for Spanish-speaking people who currently have to rely on translation from English. I mean, this would be a, this would be a workable sentence too. Saying the same sort of idea. I mean, if you say she writes the book for people who currently have to rely on these translations, then it is pretty obvious what we mean. But that uh, so well, no longer they they won't have to rely on them any longer. So, <coughs> um, you right. So if you're reading translation, then it is still Spanish, which is which is the point. Right, that, that's the she's writing for people who don't, who cannot read the books in English. Because if they could, then they would not need her book in the first place. So, yeah. So this is the opposite of what we want to say. This is this is not the point. This is quite the opposite of the point because this is what we would want to say. Okay. Um, other choices, so now if you, the other thing is this, right, there's a redundancy issue that Derek noticed. If you say that someone wrote a book in Spanish for people who can read Spanish, that is a redundant construction. So. Because, I mean, if the book is in Spanish, then, of course, the book is going to be for people who know Spanish. So, yeah, sure. There are other problems then, too. But so that, so now you're not being redundant because you're making another statement now. She wrote a Spanish-language book so that Spanish speakers do not have to rely on translation to English. So... In terms of E, so this is, D is exactly what we want to say. We want to say that people who speak Spanish do not have to rely on translation from English. So this is the choice we want. Nobody picked choice E, presumably because you probably all recognize that the meaning makes no sense. I mean, so that people can speak Spanish and then do something else. I mean, the book does not help people speak Spanish. So... Not the point. This is not the meaning. But it's not how people speak Spanish. In fact, it is quite the opposite. The book is only for people who already know Spanish. So it's, it's not. This is not only is this not the right meaning, but it is in fact guaranteed not to be true. So there it is. Any questions? about this problem. And, and then, the other thing, like if you say and, then you're also saying these are two separate things, right? If you say um, 
if I write a sentence like there was an unusual amount of traffic on the road today, and then I was late to work. What that I'm saying here is that these are actually not connected things. Like here, the implication here is that the traffic was not what made me late. So that's that's also clearly not the point. Like if you say that she did this and then they don't have to rely on translations, you're saying this is like a totally separate thing that just happened later without any relationship to her writing this book, which is obviously not the point. So that is also is also a point. Absolutely, yes. Okay. How about let's see. Um, that's not true. You can have a you can have a sentence with comma and that works just like a sentence with and. I guess there's no there's no real difference between comma and and just and. I mean, it, it, they don't test the presence of punctuation on this exam anyway. But the only thing about comma before and is that they generally put it there in sentences that are longer. No, that's the only thing that tends to consistently be true about it, but that's not a, that's not a, they don't test it in the first place, so there's nothing to worry about there. But there's no, there's no rule about what a comma is or isn't in front of the hand. <coughs> okay, here's another problem. That one. And you know, multiple choice answers are located to the shot. Okay. Um, what is two S? Um, I'm not sure what two S. Is supposed to be two subjects. Okay. Is that a reference to this from? Ah, uh, okay. All right, let's take a look at this item. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at it. Um, tourists and them combination. I mean, there's, well, that's not. Uh, how is that a combination? It's, it's not a combination. <coughs> I, I definitely have no voice. That is that is very true. Um, you guys can hear me, though, right? My voice is, is gone, but can you at least hear what I'm saying? Uh, uh -oh. Can you hear me? Uh -oh. um. Okay, you can hear me now. Oh, that was weird. Uh, my internet might have flipped out for a second there. Okay, let's discuss. Um, before we talk about anything else regarding this problem, let's just talk about the straight meaning of the problem. What? That's step one, right? The, the, the intended meaning of the sentence. Why were the chambers closed? Like, why? Why were? The, why did the chambers need cleaning and repair? So try to be as exact as possible in the wording of this. Okay. 
Yeah, it's not the it's, it's not the moisture. That's the thing you have to realize here. It, it is not. It's not the moisture itself. It's it's because the moisture did things. Yeah, right. The best I think the the most M L has a nice summary of it there, and then Gene has summarized actually has Gene has done a very nice job of summarizing both what it should not say and what it should say. The chambers were not closed because of the moisture itself per se. Like it was, if that were true, then that would mean they just had to close the chambers and like wipe down some water off of the wall. So, and that's not, they didn't, it wasn't, moisture was not the issue. The, the, the exact meaning of this sentence is the chambers were closed for cleaning and repair. The, the, the chambers needed cleaning and repair. They need to be cleaned and repaired because moisture had caused things to happen to the things to happen specifically, which were that salt was crystallizing out of the stone and that fungus was growing on the walls. So ultimately, at the end of the day, the core of the sentence should tell us this. And the core of the sentence should say that the the chambers were closed with for cleaning and repair because moisture had blah 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 had done things. So if you look at how this sentence is structured, nothing is due to moisture directly. Um, there's also a problem with the use of due to, which um, I can touch on that briefly later. But nothing is, is caused by moisture itself, per se. So these are not right. And then if you, same problem with D, nothing is happening because of moisture either. So nope. Now if you look at C, because tourists were exhaling moisture, this is not the reason why. The, the chambers were closed. I mean, people breathe out water. This is this is just how human beings and any other animal that has lungs functions. You know, you take in glucose plus oxygen, then you put out carbon dioxide and water. So this is not the chambers had to be closed because people breathe out water. Not the point. Nope. So actually, the only choice that even communicates the correct message is the last one, which says chambers had to be closed because moisture had raised the humidity to such levels that blah, 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 blah. This is the only choice that actually says what it is supposed to say. There are other reasons too that we can. Know. There are other nice reasons for limiting these choices, but this is a, this problem is a very nice illustration of the fact that only one choice even says what it's supposed to say. One choice conveys the correct meaning. So there it goes. So. Um, C is, I mean, again, this is not, this is not the point. I mean, we do not close the chambers because people breathe out water. That's, that's, what, that's what C is literally telling you. It's saying that C said the chambers had to be closed because tourists breathe out water. That's not the point. And again, the modifier there doesn't, I mean, if you have a base sentence that says they closed the chambers because people were breathing out water, then that's what you mean. And if you attach modifiers to that, that's still what you mean. Like, if you mean to say they closed the chambers because the water was causing things to happen, then you actually have to write that they closed the chambers because the water was causing things to happen. So... Um, there's no Kyle, there's no such thing as first. 
I mean, it's whatever you, whatever occurs to you to use first. I mean, anything, there's no order. I mean, anything that is, anything that is an elimination is an elimination. So, when you eliminate on other criteria first, it doesn't, that doesn't change anything about other eliminations. So, as far as other stuff, I mean, you can also, there are also heaps of other ways to solve this problem, and we can look at a couple of them. Um, one thing we can do is we can use pronouns. We've got a couple pronouns here. We've got the pronoun it, and we have the pronoun them. So what, what, these are all trying to stand for the same thing. What are they all trying to stand for? Like, what, where is the humidity? Yeah, right, it's not the pyramid, because the humidity is not throughout the entire pyramid. So you have to say, like, where is the humidity? Well, the humidity is in the chambers. So the only thing that this could even stand for in the chamber is that doesn't work because it's singular. So you can't use a singular form to stand for chambers. Same problem here, can't do it. You know, on the other hand here, this is perfectly legitimate, so we can use that. Um, same thing here, you can't use it for the chambers. So, among other problems. I mean, B also has the issue that that it says the wrong thing, as we talked about in the previous page. So, like, B is saying that things happen because of moisture itself, which is already a fatal issue. But on top of that, you have an it trying to stand for something plural. Um, as far as somebody asked earlier about ambiguous, the ambiguous is this is not this is not ambiguous. It is it is obvious that this is supposed to stand for the chambers because you have the chambers are being closed, so it is quite clear that the humidity is in the chambers. So there's nothing else that this could possibly be. So remember, you don't need to have only one plural noun in the whole world if. You use the word that. I mean, it just it just it just has to be obvious what the meaning is. So also the GMAT more generally the GMAT doesn't test ambiguous pronoun issues anyway. And so there's 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 two levels on which to respond to this. Like the first the first answer is no because it's in context it's obvious that 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 is chambers. There's nothing, I mean, there's nothing else that it could even sort of mean. But on top of that, what's probably more important to realize is that the GMAT does not test the ambiguous pronoun in the first place. So, this is not even a thing that you should be thinking about. I mean, if you, the, the only time that you could claim a truly ambiguous pronoun would be if it was actually impossible to tell what the meaning of the sentence was. I mean, if you, like, if you wanted to construct a sentence that, like, like a sentence that actually has, like, genuinely ambiguous pronoun. Like, here's an example of that. If I said, you know, Sharon was talking to Jill about her husband. I mean, in this case, we don't we don't know whose husband it is, but the GMAT has never tested anything like this. So, but this would be an example of genuine ambiguity. Like, even with all the common signs in the world, it's impossible to tell whether her husband is Sharon's husband or Jill's. So, we don't. This is not a thing. But the GMAT has never tested that. So. Um, no, because because it's not because of. Like if you say because, then it's the entire sentence after it, right? Like if you something happened, so it's not moisture anymore. 
um, make sure you know how these things work. Something happened because of that would just be a noun. But you would say something happened because whole sentence. So if you like here, here are two examples. Um, if you let's see. Um, how about school was canceled because of the earthquake that destroyed several buildings downtown. Versus if I wrote school was canceled because the earthquake destroyed several buildings downtown. So these sentences don't say the same thing. Like if you, because of refers only to the noun and not to the sentence. So in this sentence you're saying the earthquake is the reason school was canceled. And I mean, just the fact that it destroyed more downtown buildings is just another detail that I'm telling you. But like this, this sentence is like the same earthquake that destroyed all these downtown buildings was also the reason why they canceled school. But in this case, school was canceled because of the earthquake. On the other hand, this sentence, when you say because, this is because the earthquake destroyed buildings. So it's not, okay, earthquake, we're going to cancel school. This is, oh, hey, crap, bunch of buildings fell down, so we're going to cancel school. School is canceled because a bunch of buildings were destroyed. So this, um, <coughs> the exhaled by tourists was, um, Garb, if that is true, then that's just the OG solution guide writers not knowing how to explain things better. Um, one thing you should know about the solutions in the OG is that they are, they are very frequently incomplete and they are actually often incorrect. Um, the, the, OG, the OG answer keys are, are not written by the people who write the problems. Presumably because the people who write the problems and their time is probably just too valuable for that. But they, they outsource the task of writing answer keys to people who are nowhere near as good as the people who write the problems. And it, it shows. I mean, they're, they're not useless, but you should regard them with an appropriate amount of skepticism. Um, okay, so but this, this, this should answer MW. <laughs> You should answer the issue of. So you're saying, like in D, you're saying that stuff happened because of moisture, which is false. But in B, you're saying stuff happened because moisture had raised humidity to these levels, and that is true. Um, so no, no, there isn't. And if, in fact, because of and due to, are not, not only can they not be used interchangeably, but they are, in fact, mutually exclusive. So if you, um, the easiest way to understand due to is to understand that it means the same thing as caused by. So in other words, it just describes a noun in front of it. So if you um, and only the noun in front of it. So if and by the way, this is very, very frequently. This is a formal standard, and this is very frequently used incorrectly in informal English. So this is, this is the kind of, this is one of the very few things that if you just read a lot of stuff on the internet, you actually might wind up with an understanding that, that is at odds with one of the formal usage that is on the text. But here's an example. Um, if, let's say, um, 
I was delayed by an accident because I was delayed by an accident due to the um, I was delayed by an accident due to a bridge collapse. So what this means is that there was an accident that was caused by a bridge collapse. Notice that you can write this sentence as I was delayed by an accident caused by a bridge collapse. I mean, this is the easiest way to judge due to is just to take it out and put it in caused by. So what this sentence means is that a bridge collapse caused an accident and then that accident maybe I was delayed by that accident. Okay. Now if you say something like I was I was delayed by an accident um, well, like I was delayed by traffic. Here, tell you what, let's do this. I was delayed by traffic due to the due to the the concert at the our local stadium, our city stadium. Versus, I was delayed by traffic. Because of the unexpected length of the afternoon meeting. Okay, these are both sentences that don't make sense. Now, notice you know that because of is so modified the whole sentence in front of it. So here, there was traffic. The concert caused traffic, and. Concert caused traffic and the traffic delay. Now here, so this is not our afternoon meeting clearly did not cause traffic. But what this is saying is the meeting went long enough that by the time I was able to get on the road it was rush hour kind of thing. So um, that's supposed to say delayed. Let's see. Um, because of the unexpected length of the afternoon meeting is the reason why I was delayed. So like the meeting the meeting extended into lunch and into rush hour. So the length of the re of the meeting is the reason why I was delayed. The meeting did not cause the traffic. So if you put due to here, then it would be nonsense because you would be saying there was traffic due to the length of our meeting. But this, when you say because, that that describes this whole sentence here. Or if you want, you can say it's a verb the way that Leela says, or you can say that it's the whole sentence. Whereas due to stuff, is describing only a noun. So these are these are also mutually exclusive things. Okay. Um, these are things that you can do. Back to this, you can also solve this problem with parallel structures. You can do that as well. In fact, that, that should be one of the primary things that you look at. Um, there are two consequences of the humidity in the chambers. What are they? What well, what are the two things that are parallel here?
The question about difficulty, I'm ignoring on purpose because difficulty levels are something you should never think about and they can never possibly help you. Yeah, fungus was growing and salt was crystallizing, right? So there are two, there's two things that are happening in the chambers because of, of this humidity. And those are the two adverse events that are, that are precipitating this need for cleaning and repair. The first one, because you can notice that the sentence ends with and, blah, blah, blah. So you know that then the second thing that's happening is fungus was growing on the wall. So I guess it is they were, because this was in the past. So then you just go back, if you didn't catch it the first time, you go back and figure out what the other part is. So something was happening and in addition fungus was growing. Ah, well salt from the stone is crystallizing. And since fungus was growing is not even underlined, you actually know the exact form that this must take. It has to be salt was crystallizing. So because anything else would be non parallel. So salt was crystallizing, that's a parallel structure. We it doesn't it has the wrong meaning and it's a pronoun issue, but parallel wise at least it is fine. Salt so would crystallize and fungus was growing. No. Salt so would crystallize and fungus was growing. No. Make the salt crystallize and fungus was growing. No way. And salt so was crystallizing and fungus was growing. We have a winner. There it is. But again, don't forget. So you can use pronouns, you can use parallel structure, you can you can use just straight up intended meaning. In fact, you can eliminate you have all three grounds. But don't forget that you can actually eliminate all four of our answers in this thing by just knowing what the sentence is even supposed to say in the first place. It's kind of neat. Okay. <laughs> There are like two minutes left, which is not enough time to do another problem. So we will kill it here. And the next session, I do think, is in two weeks. So should be at the same time, unless things change. <laughs> it should be at the same time, unless it's not. Um, the plan right now is to keep it at the same time. and. Um, if there are any plans, there are any changes in those plans, it will be announced on the page. So stay tuned. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Um, they are archived. They are all archived. They are on the Thursday's web page. You just scroll down and you will see this ridiculously long archive of things. Okay. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night. Let's kill the recording.